Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice equation. I don't know what we should call this, maybe a rational equation, but we're going to turn it into something else real quick. Anyways, we have 1 plus x multiplied by 1 plus x squared, and that is equal to the reciprocal of 1 plus x to the fourth power. And we're going to be solving for x values. We're also going to be looking at the graph of two functions, so we can kind of hopefully visualize what the solutions are going to look like. Are there any solutions? How many solutions do we have? Think about those things. We're about to start the solution. Okay, so we have this equation, 1 plus x, 1 plus x squared, and I have 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power. What do you think I'm going to do first? If you said cross multiply, you got it. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 1 plus x to the fourth power. That's going to give us 1 plus x times 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x to the fourth power equals 1. I could actually go on and on with this type of equation. I was thinking about a longer version first, like maybe 1 plus x, 1 plus x squared, 1 plus x to the fourth power, 1 plus x to the eighth power. You notice how the powers go. They're powers of 2. Powers are powers of 2. Make sense? And then I kind of decided, okay, maybe we're going to take it easy this time and stop here. But definitely the same idea applies to more general cases. Okay? What is that idea? Let's talk about it. So there's definitely more than one way to do this. And I'll probably be presenting a single method here because I want to save the other method for something else. And what is that something else? That something else is actually another channel that I have. And that channel is actually called A plus BI. A plus BI is a channel that is about complex numbers. It's all about complex numbers. And if you like complex numbers or if you want to like complex numbers, you can go ahead and check it out. Anyways, so how do we solve a problem like this? Like I said earlier, there's a couple different ways to go about it. But the method I'm going to use is actually kind of uses the idea of conjugates. Conjugates are pretty good. And we actually had a similar problem a while ago. I'm not exactly sure if I did it, but I think I did. Something like this. Let's go ahead and talk about that first. So we had something like 1 over 1 plus x. And then we had the 1 over 1 plus x squared. I believe it was a 2 over 1 plus x squared. And then we had the 4 over 1 plus x to the fourth power. And maybe another 8, 1 plus x to the eighth power, so on and so forth. Something like this, right? So the whole idea was actually, there was another piece that I didn't write, and that was 1 over 1 minus x. And why did I do that? Because now if you notice, these two terms can be added very easily to produce 2 over 1 minus x squared. And why is that happening? Because this, these two make up difference of two squares, and when you add them, you get 2, so that's the numerator, and the common denominator will be 1 minus x squared. But when you put this together along with the other one, now these are edible, I mean, not edible, but addable. I mean, you can add them, right? They, they are really good together. They go well. They're compatible, maybe. And then whatever you get from here, you can apply it. So kind of like a, um, hmm, is that a snowball effect, maybe? I don't know. But it just kind of collapses that way. Make sense? So we're going to use a similar idea, but... We don't have the 1 minus x here. Guess what? We're going to add it to the equation. <laughs> like, really. Not adding, adding, but we're going to introduce 1 minus x to the equation on both sides by way of multiplication. Make sense? Awesome. And the reason behind that is because this basically makes it a lot easier to deal with. Take a look. We're going to use the identity difference of two squares. When you multiply these two things, you get 1 minus x squared. Multiply that by 1 plus x squared. And then you're going to get 1 minus x squared squared, which is 1 minus x to the fourth power. By the way, that is from difference of two squares one more time. And yet one more time, we need to use it. And that should give us 1 minus x to the eighth power. How nice. You just introduce something to the equation and everything just collapses like crazy. And not only that, you also get something super duper nice on the right hand side. Isn't that cool? Great. So now we can go ahead and do the following. 
subtract one from both sides or just get rid of one, we end up with negative x to the eighth equals negative x. If you want, it's not necessary, but you can multiply or divide both sides by negative one to get x to the eighth power equals x. Some people like it that way. I like it that way. I don't like the negativity even with expressions. Okay? Now, what are you going to do with this? x is such a number so that when you raise it to the 8th power, you get the same number? Is that even possible? Why not? Right? That's the first question you should ask. And we can find out by subtracting x from both sides because you never ever want to do this. Like, let's say you were given an equation like this. Uh oh, let's just divide x by both sides by x. And then you get 1. And this becomes x to the 7th power. You know what the problem is? You lose roots. You don't want that. How do you know that x does not equal 0? How can you divide by 0? Can you? No way. Okay? So, let's not do it. What should we do instead then? Subtract. Make sense? Put everything on the same side. Get a 0 on the right-hand side. And go from there. Now we got a nicer version. So, let's factor out x. You see, we're still considering the fact that x can be 0 on both sides. Because that's what you probably get from here, right? Didn't you think of that? 0 to the 8th power equals 0. Cool. But not only that, we got other solutions, which is super duper nice. So from here, we get what? x equals 0. And then from here, we get x to the 7th power equals 0. And you're probably saying, hey, doesn't this mean x equals 1? Yes and no. Not only that, that's part of the solution. Okay? You want to be part of the problem or part of the solution? A psychologist or psychiatrist asked me this type of question many, many years ago, and I was kind of like, sure, what kind of question is that? Of course, I want to be part of the solution. But sometimes, uh, anyways, that's a different story. Now, x equals 1 is not the only solution because you have to think in a different world. You don't have to, but for this channel, you can think in terms of reals, but for the A plus B, I definitely we're going to go the complex route. But if you didn't, then you would get two solutions, right? No. You can never be sure with math, right? You always, always have to check your work because of the things we introduced to the equation. So this was the original problem, right? After multiplication by 1 plus x to the fourth power. If you want to go to the very original, yeah, and you can use the original, but they're pretty much the same thing. For real x values, this will never be zero, so we're good. Another thing that's really interesting about this problem is that none of these factors, wait, that's not true. Almost none of them, I mean, two-thirds of these factors cannot be zero if x is real. But this can be zero, which means x equals negative one is a solution. Where does that come from? I didn't even see that. Because it didn't come out of our equation, right? This one? So what are we missing here? It's really weird, isn't it? Really weird. But anyways, uh, if x is negative one, we get a solution, don't we? Wait a minute, was it equal to one though? Oh, yeah, that's why it's not zero. Wait a minute, what am I doing? Okay, sorry about that. I just got carried away and turned that zero, I mean one, into zero. Okay. Anyway, so x equals negative one is definitely not a solution in this case. Otherwise, that would be contradictory, right? I don't know. Anyways, I'm just kind of uh, confusing myself here, but anyways, you get the idea. x equals one is not a solution, though, is it? Because one plus one, as far as I know, times one plus one, times 1 plus 1 does not equal 1. x equals 1 doesn't work, but why did it come up as a solution? That's for you to find out. But can I give you a secret? Let me not tell you that. But anyways, from here, you get this, which we'll talk about later, maybe at A plus B I on my other channel, because I'm also planning on introducing an alternative solutions. But so far, the only solution we have is x equals 0, because x equals 1 failed, and those were the only two real solutions we had. Now, as a result, we can safely say that x equals 1 is the only, only solution. And you can oh, go ahead and check it out to make sure it's a... Sorry about that. I don't know why I keep saying x equals 1. I meant x equals 0. You know that, right? x equals 0 is a solution because 1 times 1 equals 1. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish up with that. Ta-da! The graph of these two functions. Well... This was distributed, so that became a polynomial upgraded. This is a rational function, which is actually pretty interesting. If you look at the graph of 1 over x to the fourth power plus 1, you're going to realize something interesting because if x approaches infinity or negative infinity, 
y approaches zero so on both ends it's going to approach and guess what y equals zero is the x axis so x axis is an asymptote for the graph of this function anyways this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye